All right, today um, our viewer question is actually one that several of the viewers have reached out and asked. Um, basically just seeking help with bloating on a vegan diet and what you would recommend. Okay, uh, well this one might be a bit of a long-winded answer, wink, uh, but uh, we need to deal with this because it's so common. It's one of the major complaints people have. Oh, I tried to be a vegan once, I got all this gas and I, I made me feel bad, so I stopped doing it. So let's talk about this. And uh, to be more scientifically accurate, uh, when we're talking about bloating, I'm talking about distended loops of intestine in the abdomen. Uh, there's also uh, a use of the term bloating having to do with uh, swelling of the ankles. There's edema, uh, there's this fluid in, in tissues there where it doesn't belong. That's a, people complain about uh, period bloating, et cetera. But uh, that's another issue of fluid in the tissues. We're talking about uh, I guess in the intestinal tract, and it's just it's uncomfortable. Uh, it's unsightly to have your abdomen pooching out there, and uh, people are concerned. Yeah, I don't digest well. So let's talk a bit about this. Uh, as, before we get to strategies to help decrease the bloating, let me just say that all mammals have gas in their intestine. Uh, it's, uh, it comes from two places. There's air in our food. And so as we're eating and shoveling food in, we're swallowing air in the food between the grains of rice and the end of your fork, there's, there's air in between the leaves of lettuce and the salad, there's air. Uh, there is uh, air in the florette of broccoli. Uh, and I strongly advocated in the past chewing your food to a cream in order to break down those cell walls and absorb all the nutrients. But another advantage of chewing your food to a cream is that it forces a lot of the air out. So you're gonna swallow a lot less air and you have a lot less uh, abdominal distension. So the plea is chew your food to a puree, put a fork full of salad in your mouth, put the fork down, make salad puree in your mouth before you swallow it. You swallow a lot less air and you have a lot less, uh, a lot less abdominal bloating. Uh, second, there's other things that uh, uh, makes people swallow a lot of air. Folks who chew gum, salivate a lot, they swallow. Cigarette smokers, of course, you know, swallow a lot of air. People who drink through straws uh, can wind up swallowing a lot of air. People who consume carbonated beverages are going to swallow a lot of air. So if you're doing any of those things, uh, you might want to think about not doing them. Uh, but also, again, we can be so mindless, and I'm guilty of it too, when we're eating and talking and shoveling the food in, two chews, boom, down it goes. Uh, so uh, a plea for mindful eating to reduce air swallowing. That said, uh, uh, the very act of eating a whole food plant-based diet full of grains and legumes and fruits and vegetables are going to put some sugars down into your colon that the bacteria in your colon are gonna say, oh boy, let's metabolize them into carbon dioxide and methane. Uh, what are these, uh, what are these uh, particular sugars? There's the resistant starches that are in beans and other legumes. There's the non-digestible sugars, the stachyose and raffinose on the surface of, of legumes, which we, which we can rinse off. Uh, there's just a lot of the fiber that's in, especially the cruciferous vegetables. Uh, these, by definition, are not absorbed in this in the pass through the small intestine where most nutrients get absorbed. They do make it down to the colon and they wind up feeding the, uh, the colon bacteria, but in doing so, uh, carbon dioxide, methane uh, will be released. So uh, what can be done? Um, if this really bothers you, and, and, and before I get into any strategies, realize that at the risk of, uh, of being offensive uh, to your sensibilities, um, all, all mammals fart. You know, the, the, the average human being passes uh, anal gas 14 to 22 times a day, once an hour. Is, is the is standard is routine okay there's nothing abnormal and if you're going to be eating food that has air in it you're going to be pushing these big soft stool masses down through the colon uh, you're going to be shoving air and gas ahead of those stool masses and it's going to come out and it's normal it's fine and uh, it's it's much less odiferous than the folks who are uh, eating lots of meat and producing more uh, uh, malodorous molecules there. 
but uh, but uh, ask any gorilla, uh, they all pass flatus and you know it's not a disease. And it doesn't mean that you're having a problem with your digestion. It just means you're eating lots of fiber and uh, you got some bacteria down your gut that make a little extra carbon dioxide and methane from it. So what can you do? Some people may have particular gas producing episodes after four, one of four categories of food. And what I'm going to suggest, and I'll go through these, is these are big categories of food. But just uh, as you go through these four, yank them out for a week, seven days, 10 days at the most. And just note if you're less bloaty and less distended. Uh, and then after that seven or 10 days, start adding the, the members of this food group back in. And if the, you have a particular, if you have artichokes or onions or whatever, next day you're all bloaty, aha. You know, those are the ones that might be giving you the problem there. So I'm going to name these four categories, and, I'm, and one of them is uh, the cruciferous vegetables and onions and garlic. And it's not saying, oh, Dr. Glaber says don't eat cruciferous vegetables and garlic. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying you're going to, for a week, you're going to be a scientist. You, you won't die without broccoli for a week. Uh, yank out the cruciferous vegetables and the onions and the garlic, the leeks family, uh, and see how you do. And then start putting them back in one at a time. One night, cook up some broccoli, see how you do the next morning. Next day, you know, cook up some kale or some Brussels sprouts and re, you know, re uh, insert them into your diet one at a time. So that's the general, that's the overarching strategy here. Here are these four categories. One are wheat and corn in the grain family. Yank out all the wheat and corn products uh, for seven or 10 days. We're talking about all flour products, all baked goods, breads, uh, et cetera, crackers. So yank out the wheat and the corn, you know, the tortillas, uh, et cetera. You can use other non-glutinous grains, uh, uh, quinoa, millet, et cetera. But yank out the, the wheat and the corn for seven or 10 days and then put them back in yeah, one at a time. You know, have some corn tortillas uh, and see how you do the next day. Uh, and then uh, have uh, well, some whole wheat bread in a day or two and see how you do with that. So the wheat corn group is, is one to pull out and see, see the effect. Uh, the second are going to be the legumes, beans, peas, chickpeas, lentils, um, yank them out uh, for a week, see how you do. And, and if you get much relief, there's lots of things could be done as you put them back in because you need legumes in your diet. They are so rich in protein. Uh, first of all, uh, lentils are likely less gas producing. So those would be good food to reintroduce. Just a couple of tablespoons of green lentils and just see how you do uh, the next day. Uh, uh, split peas usually are less gas producing. And beans that are in cans, that are already canned, um, uh, most of their gas producing sugars are in the liquid that you can spill off and rinse off. And so canned beans would be a good one to reintroduce. And just, you know, you're kind of asking your, your intestines, how are you doing with this food? How about that food? How about that food? You're being a, a good scientist. So uh, the legumes are the second category. The third are the cruciferous vegetables. And again, this is just for seven or 10 days. Yank out the cabbage, Brussels sprout, kale, broccoli, cauliflower, uh, et cetera. Yeah, and while you're at it, pull out the onions and the garlic and the leeks and, and go for seven days or 10 days without any of those. And then to start putting them back in one at a time, see how you do. It's going to take you a month or two to figure it out. But if it's bothering you enough, um, that you, you, I hate being this bloaty. Well, see if there are particular foods that might be doing it. Uh, and the fourth one are the sugary fruits, uh, bananas, grapes, peaches, and prunes uh, actually uh, are, are known to uh, produce sugars that can uh, increase gas production. So yank those out for, for a week or 10 days and then, then add those back in. So you're going to test the members of these four families, and you might, you're probably going to learn a lot. Uh, and that's just one way to track things down. Um, in general, again, chew your food really well. Uh, if you are making uh, beans or lentils, you can soak them overnight in fresh water. And then uh, next morning, spill off the soaking water and rinse it a couple times. That way you'll get rid of the stachyose and raffinose sugars on the surface of the beans uh, that can increase gas production as well. So there's all these tricks, uh, but again, most of it, 
you're never going to be bloat-free, gas-free on any diet. Uh, and, uh, and again, it's not a disease and it's not a, a sign that you can't digest plant foods. It's a, it's a operational condition of being a plant-eating hominid. Uh, ask any gorilla or bonobo there. They're gonna, they're, they pass big stools and lots of flavors during the day. And that's just part of uh, being a whole food plant-eating uh, two-legged person here. So um, uh, long-winded answer, as I, as I hinted at, but this is generally the idea. But uh, again, uh, don't, don't throw the baby out with, the, with the, uh, all sorts of uh, analogies there, but uh, don't abandon a, a whole food plant-based diet just because uh, on a, for a day or two or three, you notice there's more uh, distension in the abdomen. Uh, find out ways to, uh, uh, to uh, work with your diet and go out for a walk every day. The very act of, of taking a walk jiggles your intestines up and down and you pass wind while you're, while you're walking and that decompresses the, uh, the colon. So uh, be a happy, active, plant-eating person. Uh, enjoy passing the little gas from time to time, uh, but don't see it as, as a disease. Uh, the good that you're getting off of these plants, including the, the beans and the, uh, uh, and the fruits, et cetera, so far outweighs uh, uh, any little bit of abdominal distension. Uh, definitely worth it. Uh, if you've got to uh, unloosen your belt a notch after a, a big meal, that's okay. Uh, badge of honor. Okay, uh, hopefully that uh, clarified it and uh, enjoy your whole food plant-based diet. Hi, everyone. Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Andy Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.